be there for uh, 15 days on the ship. So we wanted to have a better view. I met one of the men who was traveling, and he was a traveler from before. So he went through a lot of experience. He was a hat manufacturer. He would manufacture hats. In those days, you know, he still wore a lot of hats. Ladies, men's hats, and so forth. And the, the, the course, while we were waiting to board a ship, uh, we became friends and we talked. He was telling the experience. He lost his wife not long ago. And this is the second or third cruise he's taken. So he says, Sid, he says, you want to take my advice? He says, yeah. He says, tomorrow when you meet your uh, steward, whatever tip you decide you want to give him when you get to Haifa, give it to him now. Give it to him now. You see what happens. The same thing give to the, your waiter. One who's got a, at, the, at your table, and also half of the amount give to your uh, uh, maitre d'. They had a maitre d' there too. So I was figure 15 days, two dollars a person, you know. So I gave 60 bucks. That time, 60 bucks was a lot of money. Well, that's a lot of money when you work for it. And I gave 30 bucks to the. 60 bucks to the uh, waiter and 60 bucks to the boy, cabin boy, and 30 dollars to the uh, maitre d. The following Friday, that was Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday morning, I find a note under my, under my, uh, we passed it on a paper, early printed paper they printed there for the uh, today's functions and so forth. I found a, a, a nice golden letter envelope that Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz, he opened it up, it was an invitation to eat at a captain's table Friday night. Oh, Shabbos evening at the captain's table. Stable, yeah. On a kosher boat. On a kosher boat. And well, that Friday night, Mama wanted to look nice, and uh, naturally, uh, Stuart, he knew about it because he's the one who put us in. There was uh, Rabbi Chaim Kaplan, and his wife was there, and Professor Echad Ben Yehuda was there. Hello. That that morning, uh, the steward went ahead and made an appointment with a hair stylist on a ship, and he he was supposed to be one of the top stylists in all of Israel. Don't forget, this was uh, uh, this was uh, taking a maiden voyage for the for this. Uh, SS, Jeru SS Jerusalem, I think the name of the ship is. I think that was the name. I don't remember. SS Shalom or SS Jerusalem. I don't remember the name exactly. It was the main voyage. Well, he made an appointment with the hairdresser. Well, when she came back from the hairdresser, I couldn't recognize her. Well, she was as gray as I was. He dyed her hair. He styled it. She came back. She looked 20 years younger. I was so pleasantly surprised. I had to look twice. I couldn't believe it was her. I must have made her feel very good. And how? And at night, of course, in the evening, maybe she wore her furs and the I wore my best, the soup and fish, you know, and we went down for a couple
cocktails, all the waiters and so on were all dressed up in white uniforms, you know, and we formed a line and from each side and he walked through the line and took us into the place where they served the cocktails and all the women that were working there were all dressed up in uniforms, beautiful uniforms, blue and white. And they went around pouring cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and cake and everybody got acquainted. Of course the cocktails were just uh, for us alone because we had another room for the rest of the people too, but we have a separate little room. And then, after that, we went through the same rigmarole with a line up, both lines. And they, had a, they had a crew with 300 people there. And they sat at the captain's table. Just the captain and his wife, his, and the captain, and the Ben Yehuda, Echel Ben Yehuda, and another doctor and myself, mom and I. We were the only two ignoramuses in there. And we sat down by the table and we had a wonderful dinner served to us. Everybody, there was two, three waiters always around our table serving us and everything. And the steward, when we came back Friday night, he rearranged all our baggages, our clothes. He hung them up like we, I don't know, where should we go? He had mama's clothes up just the way it should be. Mine are clothes up as should be. He had a, he made a bed and he had the, my pajamas underneath the pillow, my sleeping pillow, folded up and he had it on the table, at a table with fresh fruit, changed every day. Fresh fruit, all kinds. And we had a nice little table there with chairs around. It was a nice little uh, room. So you really traveled first class on the boat? Oh yes, we did. And uh, as a matter of fact, the following day, he asked me what kind of booze I like. So I'm not much of a boot drinker, but uh, I like liquor. What is it? Drambui. I remember that name, Drambui. It was some other kind of liquor. He says, okay. He says, I'll get it for you. He brought it, two bottles. So I'm not going to charge it to you. We're going to have free duty, free, uh, certain day they have free duty, liquor and uh, booze cigars and so forth that I can buy that at uh, duty free on certain days only. He says, you can have it now, but on that certain days I'm going to charge it to you. And he also bought me a box of cigars, with big ones. Havana cigars? Yes, big ones. Also charged to me. And when I did give him that money, he says, Mr. Schwartz, you wouldn't believe it. If you would have doubled that amount and we got to Haifa, I would be half as much happy as I am with what you gave me right now. Because we are going to stop in uh, Gibraltar, where he had free duty merchandise that you could have bought at a third of the price he had to pay in Israel for, which he did. He done a lot of, not a lot of shopping in Gibraltar. Okay. Let's take a couple minutes break and have some tea there. Okay. Where did the boat stop on the way to Israel? First they stopped at uh, Istanbul. Uh, it couldn't have been it's Istanbul, that's in uh, Turkey. No, 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 it wasn't. No. Uh, Gibraltar? Monaco? We went through a, a big storm, Azura, in Portugal. Well, you stopped in Portugal. 
Lisbon, is it? Or? Lisbon is the main city of Portugal. That's the port over there? Yes. And we stopped there. And we had a tour. And from Lisbon, we went to Gibraltar. What do you remember about Lisbon? Was there anything special about the city? No. It was special. It took, took us to a tour of the city. Because we didn't stay there long. We took a tour of the city, and a little bit of the mountainsides, and the, a few forts, you know, that the old time, old forts they had, old time guns that they displayed. That's about all. We, didn't, we spent about two or three hours, that's all. Because we had our uh, breakfast, and uh, after breakfast we went down and we came home for lunch. And right after lunch they sailed. The next morning we woke up, we were in uh, Gibraltar. And then, of course, with Gibraltar, we couldn't come here, we had to take a tandem to the, to the city. To the, of course, they have a road that goes to Spain, but that was blocked off. Uh, Spain and Gibraltar didn't... didn't uh, there was no, people, no going back and forth. They weren't back and forth. They wouldn't permit anybody from Spain to come into Gibraltar or Gibraltar to go into Spain. They had to travel around. But Gibraltar is a, a fort still controlled by England. And they had a nice little uh, shopping uh, town, of course, free duty town. And they had very good bargains. Uh, I didn't buy much because I didn't have room to carry it. All the stuff that I uh, wanted to wear, I had on. You know, I was wearing it. I, had, I didn't have no room where to carry it because we had so many other places to go. So. I barely bought anything. Maybe I picked up something. Anyway, we had to. There was the red monkeys on top. Were a couple of, the, of uh, travelers. You know, the monkeys would come down and jump on your shoulders. There's the red furred monkeys, and uh, one or two of them lost their glasses. And they were told. They were told to take the glasses off, not to wear it, have the glass, because they come and grab it and jump into the trees and run away. And they did grab a few glasses and hats and they ran away. We did, we didn't buy anything there, we didn't wear no glasses. And we had a lunch, then we went back to our ship. Most of those, uh, The man that worked on that uh, SS Jerusalem, like my steward, my uh, waiter, and so forth, they bought a lot of merchandise there. They were Israelis? Yes. They bought a lot of merchandise, duty free merchandise. What they bought, of course, I don't know. But they carried a lot of stuff back on them. From there, we went to Marseille, France. Marseille, the only thing, they had a little ship that went every hour to the kind of Monte Cristo Island. Remember that fictional story by Dumas? Elba? About the Count of Monte Cristo? Yes. The Isle of Elba? The Island of Elba. Anyway, we went in there, and it was now they showed a dungeon. And I didn't find it so interesting at all, you know. Because I read it in the book, and uh, they had very much to talk about it. Then we came back and uh, we hired a little uh, <coughs> a buggy with a three-seater buggy. You know, they had uh, they didn't have no cars. They had these uh, hackies with the 
driving horses, you know, horses and buggies. And he drove us through the town, stopped a couple of places where we, uh, we had a coffee. And then he drove us through the garlic market. He had one market, I don't know how many blocks square it was. There was mountains of garlic. That's all he sold is garlic. Everybody wore a single garlic around their neck. Some of them had three strings, some of them had four strings of garlic. And uh, they were buying them over there, selling them garlic. Another market, they had fresh vegetables. Another market, they had fresh fish. They took us around there to show. That's all they could see there. It was a seaport town. Seaport towns, naturally. We had the fish and the vegetables. And So eventually the boat got to Israel. And then, no, from there we went to Naples, Naples. And we spent over there one day, and they gave us a tour of Naples, the city tour only. And we came back that afternoon, and we sailed down to Corsica Island. Corsica? That southern tip of Italy. From there, we went to island of Crete, I think there was an island of Crete. That's an island off the Greek uh, coast. Island of Crete. We went off there. We only spent an hour there. Then we went to Stromboli. There was another island, I think it's a volcanic island, Stromboli. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Stromboli, I don't know if we stopped at Istanbul or not, I don't remember. And from there we went to Haifa. That was the first time you were in Israel, wasn't it? Yeah. How did it feel being in Israel the first time? You know, here you were with a Jew that uh, left uh, Europe. And did you have any uh, feelings when you arrived in Israel about that? Well, I did. You know, like I start telling you, we traveled with, with quite a few groups that was ultra, ultra orthodox. came Friday night, they had services, temple, then the, the meal, they drank smears, song, you know what smears yeah, are? Song. Songs and so forth. Friday night it was a gala night over there. And we were sitting at the, the captain's table too at that night. The first night especially. It was a gala night. Drinking, I think everybody was drunk. And uh, they had a lot of entertainment. As a matter of fact, they had to divide uh, for two dinners, early and late dinners, because we didn't have enough room to serve everybody at one time. So I didn't remember whether it was the first uh, dinner or the second dinner, I don't remember. First then it started at six, the next one is at eight, or seven or eight. Then after that they had one show for the early dinners, they had one show for the late dinners. Entertainers yes. every night. And uh, as I said, the meals were out of this world. But, uh, you said there were a lot of uh, Hasidim that were yeah. on the boat with you. Was yes. What, uh, how did they react when they got to Israel? What, what happened? Well, the first thing they did, I saw most of them go down on their knees and kiss the ground. They actually kissed the ground. They got on their knees and kissed the ground. They were in Israel. 
Were there any uh, special ceremonies, or what did they do? Was there any dancing? What, what happened at the boat? Uh, at the boat? Well, the, being that the boat left late, remember, they left uh, quite late from uh, New York. And although we tried to cut the tours down to to minimum, we still had to stop and make an hour or two hours stop at these places. So when the boat arrived in Haifa, it was already sunk down. On Shabbos. On Friday night. Well, believe me, if you saw him pulling out of their beards, out of their heads, you could see it right there. They jumped and they yelled, they're going to sue the line, they're going to sue this, they're going to sue that. They went crazy. And Mother Why? and I were standing over there and laughing. Why were they going crazy? Because they had to ride a, they had to take a bus to go to their hotel. Oh, they couldn't ride in the Shabbos. You know? It was Shabbos. Some of them went to, uh, to Jerusalem and some of them went to Tel Aviv because uh, where the airport is right in between. Oh, I mean the, uh, well, the uh, Haifa uh, is where they landed, the port. Yes, you know, and, uh, and they were going to, some were going to Jerusalem, some were going to, uh, to Tel Aviv, and uh, let's see, we went, we went to Haifa, we didn't go to there. There was, we had an advantage. We went with a CIT ship. That was our agent that met us at every port. So you got to express So when we got to, we got to uh, Haifa, the agent was there waiting for us. And he had the uh, air conditioning car and he took us over the top of the mountain to the best hotel. Mount Carmel. Yeah. And we stayed there Saturday. There was no tours on Saturday, you know, Shabbos. We walked down, we walked into the city, we saw the children, you know, and coming out from the temples. And especially, uh, Mom and I were walking through the street back to our hotel. There were two little kids playing in the front yard, and they heard us talk. We were talking. He says, are you Americans? I said, yes, we are. Oh, it's so nice to see Americans here. So they started to talk to us. He says, where do you live? He said, we live right here. How long have you been here? I've been here about uh, a year's time. My dad works for the government, he says, and uh, we are taking a, uh, what do you call it, a crash course in Hebrew. Hopan, they called it. Well, anyway, they were teaching the children and the mother how to speak Hebrew and all for them to do, be able to do the buying and shopping. Although most of them spoke English, but they wanted them to speak Hebrew. And they would know, pull us into the house to meet their mother. We met the mother. And he was sent over by uh, that called Hankar Glassware that made that uh, big glass. Anchor Hockey? Anchor Hockey, yes. He was sent over by the company over there to establish a uh, manufacturing uh, business. And we got to see their home. They had two bedrooms, a little living room, and a kitchen and one bed. That was uh, already deluxe. The mother was very pleased. She's getting along nicely, she says. And uh, the neighbors are not too friendly there. But anyway, till Sunday morning, Saturday night, of course, uh, 
uh, he took us over to a couple of these uh, places where they have entertainment and drinks. The show, the guy took us down to a couple of places Saturday night after they opened, because they opened up on Saturday nights. And Sunday morning, we took a tour. But he had a, uh, a big car that had folding seats. A limousine with folding seats? Yeah. Well, there were seven of us there. Three in the back, three in the front, and two on the folding seats. No, two, two, and two. Three in the front, three in the back. Well, anyway, I was the youngest one, and I was sitting on the folding seats. Mom and I were sitting on that little folding seat that had come up after riding all day long. I said to Joseph, I said, this won't do. I said, why? Because I'm going to ride in comfort like they do. I said, why don't you tell them change places with them? I said, they're not going to be comfortable. We paid for a nice, uh, comfortable air-conditioned car. Why can't we get a, a better car, get a bigger car? He said, well, the next kind of car they have is a, uh, what do you call it, a, 10 or 12 passenger um, not a van but a limo uh, limo and although I like Joseph he was a very good man very good speaker and knows how to joke and he took us all day Sunday Saturday night he took us out all day Sunday. Sunday night he took us a different place. And then from there we drove to Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv, he put us over at the Don Hotel. What, the, what do you remember most about Israel? What was the most memorable thing? your feelings there, what do you remember that is the most, to you, the most significant thing that happened while you were in Israel, or the thing you saw? Uh, well, the most touching things I saw was the place where they had these uh, lamps burning for the, where they had these eight, uh, European, where they have these, these different ovens. No, Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem. That was, uh, Yad Vashem was the one that was most striking of all. Why do you think that was most striking to you, Dad? Well, they had pictures all around the wall, and the names inscribed on those stones, on those, on the board with letters from thousands of names from each different uh, concentration camp. And if you want to know what happened to you, to any of your beloved ones, they had a information booth. There were about 10, 12 people working behind there. All you had to do was go up and tell them what part of the country they live, the name, the name and the place and the town and so forth. And they had a record over what happened to them. And they told you right there and then. So did you uh, go to the booth and ask about any of your family? Well, Mama didn't want to. But she knew she didn't have any that were left. Well, a lot of people knew. That all those who went there knew they were uh, they had many left. But there was so much crying, so much sadness. You know, they found out that the mother, the ch 
shows are the names. They are the names of every of every mother and child and, and father and son and so forth. All the names was right on the books, written down where they were killed, about the concentration camp. They hope that maybe one or two of them had been alive at the end of the word Israel, I guess. That's right. Israel. That's